So 2019 general elections is just 122 days away. Don't forget, this particular budget you to, we are talking about here uh, is not passed yet. It's just been approved. It uh, stages. It's uh, passed on the floor of the Senate. It may need some uh, uh, concurrence. Uh, from the lower chambers of the National Assembly, and it goes on until it's been passed, and when it's passed, it's going to be signed into law for uh, the uh, INEC and security agencies to use or prosecute the election. So where are we right now? Is the 2018 election in crisis? Let's get to the conversation, everyone. Joining me from Lagos Island is Mr. Bismarck Iwani, an economist. Here also in our Lagos studio is Professor Abiola Woshika. He's also a finance and management expert. While Mr. Gideo Ojo, an election observer and political analyst, joins us from Abuja studio. Thank you so much, uh, my panelists on the program today. Perhaps let's begin with um, uh, Mr. Iwani. What do you make of uh, the back and forth? We've been here a couple of times over why the delay in the budget what do you make of what has happened no it's just uh, theatrics and going through the motions in the end what is being spent or what is being proposed to spend is uh, 189 billion naira um, plus the 45 already under the statutory requirement uh, transfers and it comes to 2.07 percent of the total budget of 2018 and 5.38 percent of the recurring budget is it going to move the needle? No, it's not going to create inflation. It's going to do it. That's a good price to pay for a free and fair election. What is important now is that this election is going to be a very tough, keenly contested election, which will bring out Nigerians to come and vote credibly, vote, you know, uh, for their. They will all be. None of, nobody will be disenfranchised, and obviously, they are going to get uh, a fair judgment at the end of the day. I think that's the important thing. So the economy is not going to suffer because of this. Um, the, the process uh, of getting the budget approved and signed and disbursed is not going to be slowed down. As you can see, it's going to be a very, very tough race, and everybody is all wired up and charged to ensure that um, we, we have an interesting outcome. Professor Awushika, when in the process of appropriations, uh, the executive and the, the legislature, we've not seen a smooth running. But if you look at the breakdown of those figures, what comes to your mind when election is 122 days away, procurement is there, issues of uh, due process, issues of, you know, the bureaucracy in, uh, in government agencies. What comes out to you right now, talking about these budgets? Well, I, I think uh, we will make it happen. Nigerians will make it happen. We'll fast track the process. Uh, it shouldn't, you know, stop anything. Um, what actually concerns me is the, the politics around the approval uh, such that it was delayed and uh, we, are, we are where we are right now. The magnitude of the budget which we know is yes very fair divided by the 70 some uh, voters 70 something million voters That's over, uh, over 84 million voters now. yeah so you're looking at about you know three three thousand four thousand naira per, per, per voter, per, per voter. Um, if we divide it over 189 million people we're looking at 1.2 million naira per voter is that so, is that too, not too expensive uh, absolutely not really yes it, I, I mean two tiers of government the the upper and the lower house and for the state six, the state the six states uh -huh. and the fct uh-huh and the um security you know which has to be even more enhanced now we're not spending 2015 naira because inflation has, you know, dealt, you know, with some of that. So, yes, I don't think it's, it's expensive. I just worry about, okay, so now that the government has its, its finances in place, what about the people who are running for government? Hmm. 
that's, where that's a very big one. Yes. Uh, and l let me uh, ask uh, Mr. Julio Ojo to come in here. He's a political analyst here. Yeah. We've been looking at the figures, Professor Oshika and uh, Mr. Oriwani. They've been giving us a sense of what these figures mean and the, the politics of the numbers. Tell us the politics of the game. Between the executive and the National Assembly, the delay... Uh, what danger are we probably heading for uh, with all of these politics? A lot, uh, a lot of um, uh, dangers. Uh, the signs are very ominous. I've said on different platforms, this leaves a sore taste in the mouth, given the fact that INEC published dates for 2019 elections on March 9, 2017, and released the timetable and schedule of activities for 2019 on January 9, 2018. Now, we have a heads up of two years ahead of this election, and ordinarily, we shouldn't be talking about delays in the release of the funds for the elections. Having said that, um, it is it is impressive that unlike what the Joint Committee of House of Reps and the Senate, uh, what they approved during the recess period uh, about last month, which was 143 billion, uh, leaving a deficit of some 40 something, 48 billion or thereabout, to be incorporated into 2019 budget. Uh, the, they pled the National Assembly has decided to uh, deal with the issue wholesale by making sure that the entire sum of 242 billion, 189 billion for INEC and the remainder of that sum for the security agencies are provided for under this environment. However, as I told me as that is, the greater challenge for me is the fact that we are not yet out of the wood. You just told us we are 122 days to the elections, and it is not a settled case. Now, assuming that the two chambers, the joint uh, chamber, the national... Right. Uh, I mean, just a moment, Mr. Mr. Ojo, I'm being told that we need to go on, on, on our first break on the program. Just stay with us. Uh, you will conclude and land on that thought when we come back. We take a moment on the program. And when we return, is the 2019 election under or in any jeopardy? Find out after this time, everyone. Turn us again.